Good morning, Ashford. It is a great day to praise the Lord. Sing this song with me. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels fall before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we do serve. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everybody. It is uh, Sunday, the uh, 23rd day of August 2020, uh, and uh, God is good. Good morning, Karen. How are you feeling? Hey, good morning. Feeling really good. Feeling great. Got back to exercising. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good. Well, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> so listen, wouldn't you agree that... Uh, Everybody needs Jesus. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree. Okay. So Absolutely. Uh, there, 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 exactly. there are two people uh, in particular who okay. need Jesus right about now, and uh -huh. that's Laura and Marco, those two tropical storms uh, uh. that are making their way uh, toward us. Uh, in the uh, Gulf Jesus. of Mexico. Yes. They both need Jesus. So listen, I want to uh, encourage everybody to make sure uh, that as those tropical storms uh, come our way, that you are, number mm -hmm. one, you are safe. Uh, number mm -hmm. two, you are prepared. And number three, we want to make sure that you are praying. Yeah. praying that's what we want to do as these tropical storms uh, head our way and so with that let us begin as we always do with every worship celebration with a word of prayer amen amen so lord we come together today uh, united in christ to seek your face and your power in prayer uh, because, Lord, you are the creator and the Lord of the universe, and because all the elements of nature obey your command, we're asking you to command the winds of tropical storms, Laura and Marco, to be still. Lord, have mercy on everyone in the path of these storms. Your word tells us that uh, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so in the name of Jesus, be our refuge and our fortress as these storms pass by. Peace be still. Lord, calm the fears and anxiety. Uh, protect our families. Uh, protect our property. Protect our pets. Peace be still. Lord, we know that some areas are in desperate need of rain. And so, Lord, release the rain where it's needed, but hold back any destructive elements. Peace be still. Give our neighbors here and across the Gulf Coast the strength and the desire to come together as a community to help one another should the need arise. Lord, peace be still. We pray for our first responders and good neighbors who will risk their own safety to help others. Lord, calm the other storms America is facing these days. Calm the storms of confusion, chaos, sickness, disease, racial tension, inequality, injustice, and political games. Peace be still. Bring your word to life in the hearts and the minds of all your people so that our actions, each and every one of us, reflect your will. Peace be still. Lord, continue to show yourself strong in the lives of the people of this church and their families and friends. 
Lord, I lift up those who are not dealing well with this pandemic. Some of us are having mental challenges and we don't even know it. Where there is sadness, Lord, bring joy. Where there is isolation, bring compassionate community. Lord, infuse them with the desire to seek and to accept, accept help. Lord, hear our prayer for our students and our teachers who are either already back in school or headed back soon. We pray that you will watch over them day and night and give them a hunger to excel in this new virtual environment. Give our parents and teachers patience, peace, and provision in the name of Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer for the leaders of our nation, our state, our county, and our city. Overwhelm them with the desire to do your will. And Lord, as always, we ask you to forgive us for any sins we've committed by thought, word, or deed. Lord, anything that we've done that's been contrary to your will and to your ways, forgive us, Lord. And help us to be quick to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our hope is in you. And so we ask you, Lord, to hear our prayer. And we ask it in the matchless, the marvelous, in the magnificent name of Jesus Christ, and all who agree shall say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so Karen, thank you again for being here. If you would, uh, would you uh, lead us in more praise and worship? Sure. God is so good. When I think about the goodness of God, I can't help but thank him. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing it with me. Let's declare his goodness. God is so good.
Amen. Well, he will rescue us. Uh, we Amen. send out a SOS and the SOS rescues us. SOS, Savior of Souls. Uh, thank God uh -huh. for Jesus. Uh, thank you very much for that, Karen. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so listen, it is uh, time now for, uh, for our message for uh, today. And so I want to uh, begin this way. So uh, for those of us who have children, and we all know, uh, if you don't know, you're going to know, uh, there comes a time when the children, our young children, our babies, will outgrow their cribs. And we know that uh, because uh, we all remember the time uh, when you had uh, laid your child into his or her crib. You had retired to your room only to awaken in the middle of the night with this strong sense that somebody is watching you. And of course, you would then discover that your child, the one that you put in the crib, rails up, has now climbed out of the crib, and uh, it has become evident that no amount of railing is going to keep that child contained. Clearly, you have underestimated the abilities of your child. And so now what do you gotta do? You gotta go get another bed and you've got to remove the crib mentality that you have for that child. So I use that example to draw your attention to how we sometimes can have a box mentality when it comes to God. Uh, for us to grow in our relationship with God, for us to, uh, to, to increase our awareness of who God is and who we are in him through Jesus Christ, we cannot, church, limit God to our understanding of what he can do and how he might do it. We just cannot box God in. He is able, the Bible says, to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we can think or imagine. Our thinking may be in a box, but God is not in a box. And so as we continue our crisis management sermon series based on the Red Sea Rules by Robert J. Morgan, I want to share a message that's titled Unboxing God. 
Ashford, if Amazon delivered a box to your front door, my guess is you would not leave it sitting there. You'd open it and you would explore what was inside and you would put it to work. God is more than we can think or imagine and he's ready to show us in a mighty way. The Israelites were backed up against the Red Sea, but they got to see what an out-of-box God can do. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you for the opportunity to come before your people to, to preach your word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, please may everything I'm about to say and do be inspired and encouraged by the Holy Spirit so that your truth and nothing but your truth is spoken, received, and believed in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so uh, listen, if you would, turn with me uh, to Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter. And we're going to look at verses 21 and uh, 22 uh, today. And uh, it reads as follows. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, so in case you are just tuning in, uh, the uh, Israelites are in, in the middle of a, uh, a very un unexpected place. Uh, they are trapped. They've got mountains on both sides. The Red Sea is in front of them, and Pharaoh's army is charging at them. They think, they believe, they are convinced that they are trapped. Now, they heard God promise that he was going to deliver them. Uh, they're just now wondering right about now, what is he waiting on? Uh, they didn't realize that, that God and we've talked about this in uh, previous sermons, that God does things in his own time and in his own way. So the Israelites expected or assumed that God was going to lead them out of Egypt in the most direct and the easiest way. They assumed that God would do things in the way they imagined. That is not what happened. Uh, the God who they believed could do anything uh, didn't select the easiest road for their deliverance. And I got to tell you, deliverance doesn't always come with an easy button to push. It doesn't. So God sends them out through the wilderness. Uh, and now they're wondering if maybe, just maybe, God has made a mistake. They, they are literally stuck between uh, some rocks and a wet place. And that's the Red Sea. So I have a question for you, Ashford. When things have not gone the way that you assume they would go, how many times have you accused God of messing up? In the box thinking about God, we'll encourage you to accuse God of messing up. God, you really messed up this time. Lord, I told you that this is the way I need my finances fixed. You need to give me more money so that I can spend my way out of this. Lord, this is the way I, I need my relationships handled. I need you to convince her that she's the problem. You know, counseling God doesn't work well for me. Lord, I, I would rather you not deal with my addictions this way. I promise you, I'll stop at the beginning of the year. It's my New Year's resolution. Lord, what works best for me is when you speak when spoken to. Otherwise, I got this, God. I got this. Church family, when we attempt to micromanage God, we confine God to a box. And when we do that, we can find ourselves stranded by the shore of the Red Sea, our Red Sea moment. And you know what? We never cross over to the other side. So the Israelites just could not wrap their minds around the fact that God had been working behind the scenes and was about to pull off one of the greatest miracles of the Bible. And he was going to do it right before their very eyes. 
they could not wrap their minds around the fact that God had them right where he wanted them. And that takes us to rule number eight that we're talking about today. When you are facing a Red Sea crisis in your life, trust God to deliver in his own unique way. Trust him to deliver in his own unique way. God wants to customize a Red Sea crossing for you. Now, we need to own that. Own that. Say it. Say it with me. God wants to customize a Red Sea crossing for me. Don't settle for the world's off-the-rack solutions. For we've got a mighty God that has a customized, tailor-made deliverance plan for you and for me. Trust God to deliver you out of whatever mess you are in. I mean, what does Psalm 34, 19 say? It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So let's take a few minutes to talk about how God delivers. He delivers three ways, at least. God delivers openly, God delivers uh, providentially, and God delivers mysteriously. So what do I mean by God delivers openly? Openly or covertly, uh, not, not concealed, not, not done in, in private. Uh, God, God will deliver right there in your face so you and everybody else can see it. So clearly, uh, the, the Red Sea parting uh, was an overt, an open display of an unboxed God in action. It was a miracle. By definition, a miracle is a supernatural act of God. It is when God causes something to happen that if, if it were left uh, to the natural order of things, it would never happen. It's supernatural. I'll give you an example. So, so if, if, I, um, uh, uh, left a, uh, if I put a green banana out, right? So if left to nature, uh, that, that green banana would turn yellow, and it would ripen, and then it would turn black, and then it would rot. So Ashford, if you bought a green banana last year, and it's still green, you got a miracle on your hands. The Red Sea parting was a miracle. But the Red Sea did not part on its own. Go back to uh, verse number uh, 21 in uh, chapter 14. It says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. Moses stretched and God moved. Moses did not part the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea. But by stretching his hand, Moses brought attention to what God was doing. And I would argue that that is the only reason God has Moses stretch out his hands. God didn't need Moses to do that to part the Red Sea. But here's the point. Uh, our act of obedience can make the way for others to see the work of God. When we act in obedience to God, when we do what God says for us to do, what God instructs us to do, what God encourages us to do, what God commands us to do, no matter what it is, we put God's wonder-working ways, whether we recognize them or not, we put them on display so the faithless or the hopeless or the lost can witness the power of an invisible God at work. And so miracles are not an indication of our spirituality or our faithfulness. The Israelites were not very faithful. You just read ahead to chapter 15 in the book of Exodus and you'll figure that out very quickly. Miracles indicate God's concern about the corporate well-being of his children. And so Ashford, we need to stretch out our hands more. We need to point to what God is doing so that the rest of the world can see. I love what the songwriter wrote. He says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? And by the way, speaking of miracles, 
There are approximately 150 miracles recorded in the Bible. 150. Now, that's far less than uh, what most people would think. But when you think about the roughly 4,000 a year time span that's covered in the Bible, 150 miracles are not a lot. Does God perform miracles today? Yes, he does. But miracles are not his primary method of deliverance. Uh, more, more often than not, uh, and, and listen, I, I can be guilty of it from time to time, but uh, th th those things we call luck or coincidence are neither luck nor coincident. They are really the divine providence of God. So God delivers providentially. And here's what I mean by providentially. In other words, that's God working behind the scenes or covertly. Overtly, so you can see covertly he's working behind the scenes. It's the unseen hand of God that is guiding, that is guarding, that's arranging circumstances in our lives for our good and for his glory. I'll give you an example. So remember the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. Remember, he gets thrown uh, into a hole by his brothers, and then he ends up sold into slavery in Egypt only to become the second most powerful man in Egypt next to Pharaoh. Did God work that thing out or not? Yes, he did. The Bible says all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Divine providence. It's no accident, Ashford, that you're here today, that you're listening to this message. It's no accident. The providence of God will take time. It'll take money. It'll take people out of any situation that gets in the way of God getting glory. Somebody ought to say amen to that. I know somebody's got a testimony. I've got testimonies of how God has taken time, money, and people out of situations that if left to, left to nature, they would never have happened. But God worked things out in my life, and I know you've got some stories to tell about how he has worked some things out in your life. So what we see as a Red Sea moment in our life may actually just be an opportunity for God to do something extraordinary in an ordinary way. We've got to trust the creativity of God. I trust the creativity of God. So uh, Charles Spurgeon, who's a, a 19th century preacher uh, and a good preacher, he said this. He said that we believe in the providence of God, but we do not believe half enough in it. We're halfway there. We need to work a little harder. We need to pay closer attention. God is leading us through some things. God is leading us through this pandemic, Ashford, and he's not doing it necessarily by a series of overt actions or miracles, but by all kinds of behind-the-scenes orchestrations that are sustaining you and your family. Just when you didn't think you had enough, you're finding yourself not wanting for anything. Don't think that God is not orchestrating that. And so the third way God delivers is he delivers mysteriously. Okay, he delivers openly, he delivers providentially, and then he delivers mysteriously. Isaiah 55 and 8 says this, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Now let me interpret that for you. He's really saying, I'm God, and you're not. <laughs> That's really what he's saying. God's perspective of deliverance is different from ours. He, he doesn't hand out uh, cookie-cutter solutions. One size the, does not fit all. Sometimes God will deliver in ways that we don't understand. We don't. I mean, our loved one dies from cancer, and, and, and we don't see that as them being delivered. Uh, someone uh, files for bankruptcy, and uh, we don't see that as them being delivered. Sometimes God does things, and we will ask him why, and you know what God says? Ask me later. Ask me later. The Bible says the secret things belong to God. 
So even when you don't understand, we've got to trust God. We can't box him into our understanding. Uh, when, when, when the Red Sea opens uh, for you, when you have that moment, don't, don't vex uh, over uh, how God did it. Just get to stepping. Get to stepping because God delivers mysteriously. He does. And we won't always understand it. He delivers mysteriously. He, he delivers openly. He delivers providentially. And really, uh, the, there's a bonus way that God delivers. And I believe it's the best way. And that is that God delivers through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He does, he does, he does. So we all know what an echo is, right? An echo, right? It's, it's, the, it's the repetition uh, of a sound uh, that, that's caused when, when, when sound waves of the, the original sound are then reflected back. So it's sound that is bouncing back. It's like you, you bounce a rubber ball off the ground and it, bounces back up towards you. So sound waves do the same thing when they, when they hit a solid object. So follow me on this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when God spoke Jesus Christ into the world, it caused an echo. And that echo continues to reverberate around the world. In fact, at one point, that echo passed right by the Red Sea and it parted. You see, what God did in parting the Red Sea and allowing the Israelites to cross over to another a level of freedom, in my mind, points directly to Jesus Christ. Jesus' death and resurrection allows us to cross over to a new level of freedom. Freedom from the guilt of sin and shame. Second Corinthians 5.21 puts it this way, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Trust God, Ashford, to do the impossible in unexpected ways. Take God out of the box. Unbox God. Robert Morgan, who uh, wrote the book, The Red Sea Rules, he says that the Red Sea was a gateway for Israel that became a graveyard for the Egyptians. Trust in the Lord to direct your path. Trust God to create a gateway for you. He'll do it. And then go where he has made a way. And know that God can make a way out of no way. He will. He will deliver you in his own unique way. So Ashford, be encouraged. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word that has gone forward. I thank you, Lord, that because it is your word, it never returns void. Lord, I thank you that it will accomplish all that you've sent it to accomplish. And so I believe, Lord, in the days and the weeks and the months to come, that those who heard your word today they will be changed by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, we uh, invite you to uh, join our virtual altar call. Uh, if, you are, um, if you have a prayer concern, if you have a celebration, if you uh, don't know Jesus, if you want, to know, know, you want to know more about the Lord, whatever it is, Please lay, lay your hands on your computer screen, on your smartphone screen. Uh, just connect with us virtually for this altar call. As I said earlier, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it, 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 it is not complicated today. Let today be your day. Surrender to God today. Trust God today. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I, I, I confess that I'm a, a sinner. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, uh, come into my life. Lord, I, I believe you. I trust you. I believe that, that God sent his only son to the world and that he lived and he died and he, 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 he he was raised from the dead to save me of my sins. Lord, I'm sending out a SOS. Save me in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, trust me, church family, you are saved. Now, if you have questions, 
that uh, you would like to ask us about this uh, worship service or about the salvation process or about anything related to uh, this church, you can contact us. There's the email address and the phone number on your screen. It is time once again uh, for us to give back to God via our tithes and offerings. We continue uh, to uh, just celebrate the generosity of this church. We thank you, Ashford. Uh, you, are, uh, you, you are just showing yourself strong in the Lord, and I thank you. I thank you. Thank you very much for that. We have a multitude of ways to give here at Ashford. They are on your screen online. You can text. Uh, you can uh, participate in our ACH uh, auto draft, or you can share your gifts by mail. And so I want to encourage all of you within the sound of my voice, uh, please, uh, if, if you would, if you're able, uh, sow a seed into this ministry. Uh, God is blessing us, and we thank you for your support. So listen, I've got a couple of announcements that I want to share with you, uh, and uh, one of them has uh, has to do with uh, with school and our children. I want to tell you that that we have determined that we're going to do a, a back to school prayer walk, uh, and it's going to be on Tuesday, September the eighth. Uh, that is the day that HISD is scheduled to go back to school. It's going to be at 7 p.m. But now here's the deal. Uh, you can join us on foot. You can join us on the phone. Or you can join us uh, online. So uh, listen, because we're now living in a virtual uh, reality, uh, we want to make sure that everybody participates. So here's what you do. If you're going to join us on foot, just uh, come to the church at 2201 South Derry Ashford at 7 o'clock. Uh, and we're going to pray first and then we'll dispatch to the area schools on foot. If you want to join us online, all you have to do is just go to the information on your screen. It really is the same information that you use for Sunday school. On Sundays, uh, we're going to use that, that Zoom uh, login and password, and so you'll be able to join us virtual. Someone will lead that prayer uh, that uh, prayer part uh, there, or you can join us on the phone. You can simply dial that number and join a phone conference call if you don't have access to a computer. And, and again, that is the same number we use for our Power Wednesday Bible study. So listen, back to school prayer walk, Tuesday, September the 8th, 7 p.m. on foot, online, on the phone, no excuse for you not to participate. Also, I want to remind you that, yes, our virtual Sunday school is later today at 1030. Again, you can go to the website and download the uh, instructions. Uh, we are uh, continuing uh, in the uh, book of Psalms, Psalm 119. We'll be looking at verses 137 through 152. Matt Chandler is providing the resource, and our very own David Booth is providing the leadership. It's always a great conversation. Also a great conversation for our Power Wednesday Bible study. There's the number on your screen. Diana Fair uh, is leading the way uh, there. We've got some great participation. Uh, we could always use more. So come on and join our Power Wednesday. Power up on Wednesdays uh, here at Ashford. Our prayer conference call is uh, on Tuesdays and Saturdays, uh, 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, noon on Saturdays. Uh, there's the uh, instructions as to how to get connected. Uh, listen, listen uh, much, pro much prayer, much power. And so we need to continue to pray. Amen. So Karen, listen, uh, we've got a lot going on here at Ashford, don't we? A lot, a lot, yes. <laughs> Definitely a lot going on. Yes, yes, we do. That's so, awesome, though. Yeah, I, I think so. So I'm just, listen, I'm really looking forward. Uh, you know, I don't know that things will ever return to uh, normal, Karen, but we've got to, whatever our new normal is going to be, wherever the Lord is leading us to continue mm -hmm. to, to do good ministry, valuable ministry, we need to do that. Uh, and so I think this is a good way for us to ease back in. Amen. Yeah, amen. I agree. <laughs> so if you would, Karen, as always, would you close us out in song? I will. This is just, I love this scripture and I just love this blessing that I sing when we close. And I'm looking forward to our singing it together when we once join each other again. The Lord bless you.
Amen. And peace is a good thing. It really is. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you uh, all for uh, joining us today. Remember to uh, remain safe as these tropical storms head our way. Be prepared. And of course, pray. Well, as always, we uh, close out our worship service with uh, three questions, and they are as follows. Who's the head of this church? The answer, Jesus. Who is the church? We are the church. And what are we as a church called to do? We are called to serve. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a great and safe week, and we will see you next Sunday. God bless you.